welcome welcome along to our viral journaling workshops today um we've got some exciting guests today <laughs> this is jemima she's one of our new little baby guinea pigs and um she's just with me as we start off today to chat to you about our theme today so i'm um, just welcome everybody along as they come and join us now on our YouTube premiere. Um, if you um, can say hi in the comments, that would be fantastic. Um, do all those YouTube-y things, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, all those kind of things. It always means a lot and helps everybody to be able to find our videos later. So I thought I'd call our introduction today, Lessons from a Guinea Pig. <laughs> Um, these little guys have been with us for just over two weeks now and um, they live in our living room at the moment because they were bred inside so they're not used to the cold and we have tried to put them out in the garden in the run just for a little run around once and um, they were shivering and freezing so they're in with us so we've been learning lots of lessons from these little guys because they chatter and talk and communicate all the time. I don't know if you can even hear her now. She's chattering away to me as I stroke her. And they communicate constantly. And some of the things they communicate, you can work out what they mean and what they're trying to say to each other and what they're trying to say to me. They get very loud when they want some food or they think some food's coming their way. And so we can learn all sorts of things from these little guinea pigs. And what we're thinking about today is how we talk over each other, what words we share and how we um, respond to each other. So as we just prepare our hearts this morning to, or this evening, if you're doing the evening workshop, just take a moment to just stop. I'm sure that you've already said a lot of things to a lot of people, or you've thought a lot of things about a lot of people. And um, it's just good as we come to this point in time where we're going to spend some time with Father God. Hello. To just quieten our hearts and prepare ourselves for what he's got to say to us. So I'm just going to invite Holy Spirit to come and meet with us and then pray a blessing over us. And then I'm going to play um, a song sung by my lovely friend Andrea called Through It All and during this song I just invite you just to grab your Bible and a notebook and just listen to what God is saying to you at this time. What is he wanting you to hear? And then we'll have a bit of time chatting about Ruth chapter 2 together. So come Holy Spirit, we thank you for your blessings upon us. And Father I pray, pray a blessing over each and every person here. Come and meet with them. Let them hear your heart for them. May they understand your love for them. And may your peace guard their hearts. In Christ Jesus. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Let's just have some time listening, shall we? This 
mountain that's in front of me will be thrown into the midst of the sea and through it all through it all my eyes are on you and through it all through it all it is well through it all through it all my eyes are on you and it is well it is well so let it go a special song isn't it to hear those words that through it all it is well with our soul i think so often we can get into this kind of situation where we're so focused on our problems on 
the challenges that we're facing that we lose that perspective because so often with hindsight we can look back and say yes through all of that Lord you were with us that you had provided in ways I hadn't expected that I didn't see coming and yet in the moment to say it is well with our souls to say that our eyes are on God even when we're struggling that can be a challenge for us can't it in our patterns of speech we can sometimes find that we get stuck in communicating the struggle rather than the success I no not, not success the strength that we have in God the blessings that he's providing over us there is such power in finding those people who help us to speak those things out in our lives I can think of a few really special people that have helped us in those times where we are really in a season of struggle, who've picked us up and helped us to fix our eyes back on Jesus, who have said to us, look how God is providing, look at where his blessings are flowing, look at all those people he's showing his heart and his love to. And that's what we see Boaz doing as he displays this godly character in chapter 2 of Ruth. We see him sharing, don't we, the blessings of God to everyone he meets. And especially to Ruth. We find Ruth here, don't we? She's in a new land. They have a home, her and Naomi, Naomi's family home. But who knows what a condition it's like after all those years away. And they have fields, but no crops in them. And so they have no food, no provision for them. And so Ruth goes off to glean, to collect from the harvest all that's left behind, to gather from the floor the things that have been dropped, the heads of wheat that maybe aren't good enough, the straw and the, the mess that's, and the debris that's left behind and see if that would scrape together enough for a meal for her and Naomi for that day. But Boaz is beyond generous, isn't he? And he allows her to collect not only from the floor, but from the sheaves for themselves, and, from, and to encourage his workers to actually pull out some of those wheat heads for her to gather for her and Naomi. And so she is provided for abundantly. You see, God had a plan for Ruth and Naomi in that season. He had a way in which he was going to work and it required them to be in need to be at that point of vulnerability where they needed him and his provision and we can hear about some of that plan of God as we listen to Boaz's words in chapter 2 verses 11 and 12. Boaz replied I've been told all about what you've done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband how you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with a people you did not know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Under God's wings who she came to take refuge. She's come to an alien place and yet she has come because of the Lord, because God drew her to that place to be with Naomi, because she'd seen that light of God shining from Naomi, she came to take refuge under his wings in this alien land to her. You see, this idea of God's wings being the refuge for the Israelites was a really, really important image. It's an image we come to again and again. You've probably heard me talk about it before if you've listened to me for any time at all. It's this idea that God covers us. And the Israelites wore that, the Jews wore that on their clothes. They created tassels on the end of their cloaks with a blue thread in them to remind them that it is under God's wings that they attend taking refuge they carried it everywhere they went and I wonder if Ruth had started to wear some of these kind of clothes that she, whether she was aware of what the clothes of the Israelite people were symbolizing that they had a physical reminder with them always of an invisible God that God was covering over them that they had a place of refuge everywhere they went. And now it's spoken over Ruth by Boaz. 
See, Boaz spoke words of blessing not only over Ruth, but over his workers and his servants. In some churches, we would encourage people to do that. We would say to each other, wouldn't we, the Lord be with you. And that's what we see Boaz saying here. And he speaks blessing over them, but over also provides for them with food and water and shelter. And he extends that blessing and that provision to Ruth. No one was excluded. So Ruth was provided for, not only enough for her and Naomi to be able to eat that day, but in abundance that they would also have enough to store. And I just wonder, as we reflect on this passage today, are we shining that part of God's character out to each other? Especially in this season where we are all suffering, where there is struggle all around us. Are we remembering to speak those words of blessing to one another? At the start, when we were in lockdown, we sung the words of the blessing over one another, didn't we? Country after country after country joined in in singing those words of blessing. And I wonder what it is time for now in this season. What blessings are we going to speak over one another? What blessings are we going to provide for one another? Is there someone we're going to be providing for in abundance in this season? Is a way, there a way that we can communicate this covering of God's love to each other? I want us to reflect on that idea as we journal today. Um, in my page, I'm going to be um, creating a tip in at, to act as a covering over the Bible passage. Because I just find that idea that we are covered over by the grace of God. That he is our refuge in these times to be so powerful. And I want to remind myself and remember that. So I'm going to create a physical covering over my Bible page today. And I invite you to create how you feel led. So if you're new to Bible journaling and you want to just copy and do the similar thing to I am, everything you need will be in the devotional box. Um, and you can do that today. Or if you want, you feel that God is speaking something different, that there is something else that you want to record that he is saying to you, then you do that in your way. It is your time to spend with God and meet with him. And it's important that we listen to him. Okay. Okay, it's time to get into our Bibles. I love this bit. It's always very exciting. Um, today I've been reading through my Ruth devotional. So we're in chapter two and you'll find it right in the middle. So there's some questions to answer if you've been looking at that and you can have a, a bit of time to reflect and pray. And then I'm doing a couple of things in my journaling Bible today. So I'm using gelatos to mix with my... Um, Matcha, no, my clear gesso to create the background. Um, so I've got those here. I'll show you how to do that. I've got colouring pencils, some um, various pens and bits and pieces that I always have when I'm Bible journaling, and then I've got this beautiful piece of clear, um, of printed vellum, which has that kind of wheat field look at the bottom. That was in the devotional kits, and then I've got my die cuts and my stickers and I'm using um, these images that were also in the packs um, to colour in. So they're the bits and pieces I've got today. Oh yes, and my stickers. <laughs> A bit of everything I think nearly today. And I've got my twinings tea on the go. So I'm all ready to journal and hopefully keep warm. It's jolly cold here today. I've got my wrist warmers on as I'm recording the voiceover and I had a big jumper on. So this is what I've been playing with being prepared. Those little blobs were um, bits of clear gesso mixed with gelato to see what colour background I wanted to create. So you remember last month we created this page and roof in watercolour. Now I don't want to reactivate those watercolours on that side of the page. So I want to create a layer to protect it on the other side. Now I could just put down a layer of clear gesso um, over this page and that would stop any water getting through and waking up those watercolours again. But I didn't want it just to be clear because I wanted to put a background colour on this page to make that vellum really pop. So 
I'm just going to pop in a scrap bit of paper. It's the best way to use old sermons, I find. That's what that is today. Um, in between those pages, ready for wearing it, I'm going to seal the page. I'm just going to show you these colours that I've been playing with. So I've got the deep purple, the mustardy yellow and orange. And all I've done is mix them with some of the clear gesso. This is the Dina Weekly clear gesso. And then there's a few layers built up on this paint that I've just popped on with a paintbrush. And I just use those to kind of try and decide what I want my background colour to be. So I'm going to move everything out of the way again. <laughs> and then bring my vellum in and lay it over the top and see which colour combination I like best. Now you can see they all look good and they all bring out something different about the image. But for me it's the mustardy tone that is my favourite. But you can see using each of them they all bring out that image in different ways. So you could definitely choose whatever colour background you like. And if you don't have gelatos they're really nice because they're not going to add any water to my gesso. So that's why I'm using them in this instance. But you can use um, acrylic paint or watercolour paint to colour your gesso as well. Um, or even sharpen some watercolour pencil into it maybe. <laughs> have a play and have a try and see. Um, so all I do, they're like a really creamy um, crayon that's activated in water. And you can use them wet or dry in your Bible. But I'm going to use them with gesso. So I scribble some down. You can see there's some lumps and bumps and it's not very smooth. And all I'm going to do is then put some gesso blobs around it. Trying to guess how much I'm going to need. Which is always the challenge. <laughs> but I just go for surrounding it and believing that will be okay. And then it's like mixing a cornflower paste. So you want to kind of bring in a little bit at a time, a little bit more gesso and the smoother you get that first mix with, and get as many um, lumps and bumps of the gesso crayon out of the way, the smoother your end result will be. There's loads and loads of different brands of watercolour crayon out there. Some of them really cheap um, children's ones and I'm sure they'll all work but as always if you're trying out a product in your Bible that is different to the one I've used just test it out on one of those back pages of your Bible to see whether it um, bleeds through the page and you'll soon know whether it's good to go or whether you want to try something different. So that's all I'd recommend you do. You don't have to use the same products as me. But obviously, if you do, you need to test that. If you're using something different, you do need to test it. So, with gesso, um, I really like using thin layers. You can lay it on thick, <laughs> but um, I tend to end up with a mess. So, I've got this sponge brush. You can use um, like a credit card and scrape it on, but because I've got the, the die cut pieces um, on the other page, I'd end up with quite a few lumps and bumps. And you can also use a baby wipe, but I'm trying not to buy them. And I know there's ones with less plastic or claim to have no plastic, but I'm just trying to get by without them. So I'm using the sponge brush and um, just put on a clear layer and then another clear, a clear layer? No, a thin layer and then another thin layer. And to me, that gives me enough colour. I don't want it to be really dark. You can see I can still read all of my text perfectly well. And... Um, I'm really happy with the tone of the colour. You can keep adding layers to build up the colour or you can add more of the pigment into your gesso and get a deeper tone. But for me, that's perfect. Not too dark, but just really warms up the tone of the page. So I'm going to use some of these images that were in our devotional packs today. Um, just kind of some grafted heads and other plants and flowers that you'd probably find in fields if you didn't use pesticides <laughs> so I'm guessing they might have been in Ruth's um, field as she was gleaning or definitely around the edges maybe <laughs> so I'm just colouring them in um, really quickly I use Prismacolor pencils to colour mine in if you're interested in um, brands and makes and things but they're not going directly on the bible page so you don't need to worry about brands and makes and that kind of thing. Whatever you've got or feel comfortable in with is great. Um, so these pencils in particular are really lovely because they blend together really nicely. So if I overlay the colours, I can kind of blend them together. I have a 
I have got a blending pencil for when they're larger areas but just for these little finer details um, just overlaying the colour seems to be enough to, to blend the colours together and so I'm just going to use the same kind of um, palette of colours that I've used for all of this Roof Devotional kit I've got my mustard yellow and brighter yellow some deep brown, a burgundy and a dark purple as well as a grey and then I'm going to cut them out. I'm going to fussy cut these off camera because obviously when you're cutting all the way around an image it takes a while. So in a moment, ta-da! There they are, fussy cut out and perfect and ready to go. Now I didn't want to cut out all the fiddly bits in the middle and the great thing about painting the background of the page with a colour that I've got that I can turn to paint is that I can colour in the background of these images where I don't want to fussy cut out in the middle of the the holes and make them too fragile um, with that background colour and then they'll look like they've all been cut out and they'll blend in with my page perfectly which is fabulous so that's all I'm doing here I've got some of that gelato scribbled down on the paper again and I'm activating it with water to um, colour in some of those background areas you can see there I'm just checking how everything's overlaying <laughs> I'm just trying to dry off my gelato and they're blowing away um, and I've got that curly page syndrome that you often get on a gesso page so I've just got a piece of washi tape there that I've stuck to my hands till it's not so sticky so I've stuck down the curl <laughs> and then I can go ahead and um, glue these onto my bible page using that um, Dreamies glue pen that was in your devotional kits um, I just positioned them where I want them to go and then I'm sticking them down I'm trying not to go over the Bible um, words too much as I stick these on. I'm not so worried when I'm journaling to always leave them clear but my preference definitely is if I possibly can then to not stick things over the top but sometimes I get carried away and forget <laughs> but these aren't my study Bibles they're not the Bibles I use to read it the word of God I, they're the ones I use to create my memories so I don't worry too much. Now you'll see with this piece of vellum it doesn't perfectly match the size of this bible so I'm just trimming the top and the bottom and getting my other bible to show you that in this ESV bible, journaling bible it fits perfectly but in the um, NIV bible I've got here it's a bit, um, the pages are wider so it doesn't fit as well so what I'm going to do because I'd like it to cover the whole page is create an extra part to go into the spine so I'm elongating the piece of vellum so I'm going to sandwich the vellum between a pretty piece of card and a plain bit of paper that will go on the back and that will give it the strength to all be stuck together and sit on this page nicely now I've got my glue runner and I know it's a bit tricky to see white on white but I'm just popping some glue down and then I've marked on the page where the um, piece of paper needs to sit in order to make it the right width just with a, a little red line and I'm just sticking that down on there before I grab my pretty piece that will go over the top just checking the width is right and then I'll put the pretty one over the top so there's no stickiness stuff showing and it looks all beautiful again and then I'm going to round the corners of my vellum so that it kind of matches into the bible page because this Bible has lovely rounded corners and then it sits a bit nicer. I don't have a corner rounder at hand and it was an on the spot decision so <laughs> I'm just going to use scissors but if you have a corner rounder you can use it and if not if you're feeling confident you can go ahead and just use some scissors and try not to get the off cut stuck in the middle of your Bible. <laughs> so there we go you can see how that page is creating that covering over um, the Bible text just like we talked about how God is a covering over us and we sit under the refuge of his wings so I'm just going to decorate this now with a few of the stickers from the pack and then you'll see right at the end when you see the photos I also go back in and um, use some of the die cuts as well because I didn't feel like it was all quite balanced out enough um, and I wanted to change it a bit so that's why I do later but it's literally a matter of just sticking a couple of extra die cuts on and you know how to do that. So that's 
me, I'm now going to use the word love from the pack because I want to write on this piece of vellum covered by love because that is what I'm trying to remember as I um, create and create this memory of this time with God this month. So if you were really sensible, you would have written out your text on a piece of scrap paper underneath and then copied over the top so that your words don't go up the hill like mine do. But I'm not worried. I'm very sorry if you're offended by my sleepy writing, but it's all me and it's all natural. <laughs> so there we go. Now I just want some journaling lines on this page underneath to write out a prayer. So um, I quite like it when they look a bit scribbly. So I've used the burgundy pencil and just scribbled out some lines and then I'm writing a prayer to help me remember what I was creating about in this page and just, just commit this time to God um, with my words here. So that's my prayer going into my Bible on this page. Remembering that Boaz spoke words of blessing over everyone he meets and covered them by his love, especially in his relationship with Ruth. And so now I'm going to think about sticking this tip in. in. Now I use um, an adhesive strip called Zips. It's just a double, really, really thin double-sided tape. Um, you, I measure it to size, rip it off. I'm trying to show you that it's just a really thin bit of adhesive but I think the closer I get the more you can't see it so I'm sorry about that but the further away there you go now you can see it there's just a really thin line of glue on there now you can use um, a double sided tape something like red liner tape would be perfect because it's got that extra bit of strength so it's not going to ever fall out of your bible um, the zip seems to be hard to get hold of I've had this box for years and years so the red liner tape is definitely more readily available if you wanted to, if you needed or wanted to buy something. But otherwise, use some washi tape or double sided tape, whatever you've got lying around. And I'm just going to stick this pit um, down with some washi tape so it's not curling because I don't have enough pairs of hands <laughs> to stick it down where I want it to. So I'm just going to tack it down with the washi tape and then I'm lining it up so that it's going to come over the edge of this piece of paper so that when I stick it into my Bible it's coming right into the middle. So that's all it is and then you want to open up your Bible as far as it will possibly go and try and get it right into the spine rather than it sitting actually on the piece of paper. You want to get it as far into your Bible as possible so it becomes another page and a page that covers over your Bible. So we're now drawing to a close and it's nearly time for you to create in your Bibles. So I just wanted to pray the blessing over you as we get ready to go and create. So, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you there we go you might need to grow an extra pair of arms to stick your extra bible page in it depends whether you're <laughs> better at it than me but um don't be afraid to go and ask for help if there's somebody else in the house who can help you there wasn't when i was doing this but i could have done with someone to hold the pages open and normally when we do this at workshops together we hold each other's bibles don't we so that we can do it but not this time but if you take things slowly and steadily, you'll get it all the way in there and it will look beautiful. And I can't wait to see what you create. So we'll come on to Zoom in a little while. You'll have all the details you need if you signed up to the workshop on Facebook. And then we'll be able to share what we create and all that God has been saying to us, which is always so exciting to hear. So go and have a really blessed time with God listen to him he's desperate to speak to you and he loves you so much so god bless everyone and i will see you really soon